Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at Westfold. And 2024, guys, PHP better than ever. What is going on here? Okay, I have not been covering PHP for you, right? Is that a lot of these influencers have changed their tune. So they were all mockery and all laughing about PHP. But today, winter is coming here in the software development world. And a lot of them have started to put up videos, right, about stuff like, PHP, is it faster than Go? PHP, is it good? And they have sort of started to come around to PHP, but one issue is that it's done in a little bit of a backhanded compliment. What am I talking about is that they like to say something like, blah, 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 these are all the good things about PHP, but, you know, so and so and so and so. And all these things we have heard before, if you're listening to my video in 2024, right? Let me tell you something. Since the first video I made, things have not changed. The PHP is still great, but it's getting better and better. But what has happened to these people? What, why have they changed their tune? Number one, the tech sector has slowed down. You've heard it all over the place. I've talked about a little bit. Layoffs here, layoffs there, layoffs everywhere because it's too bloated. You cannot have 10 developers, uh, you know, six of them not knowing anything, uh, you know, just fattening up their resumes, trying to build code here. That is one of the big problems. So that idea of massive amounts of people running this stuff is not happening anymore. And what's happening? People have got to start looking at about getting projects at a reasonable cost out there. So the jobs for these very complicated systems where people overpay for engineers, very hard. That's why the other tech lead, he's out of job. You know, he's ex Google, ex Facebook, ex, ex, ex crypto, right? That is what is happening because you've got to deliver performances for the small and medium businesses out there. We're talking about guys who need a website. We're talking about you need an efficient project or uh, MVP. And you cannot build languages that are so full of complexity. Now, how do I compare this to? I compare this to you guys going out to a, a three-star, two-star Michelin restaurant versus buying and making your own pasta at home. And that's what PHP is. It gets the job done, it's healthy, it gets everything and a reasonable price. So in 2024, what is happening is a lot of these guys have started looking at the absolute spaghetti of JavaScript and spaghetti of code, you know, Rust or whatever complex stuff they have come up with. And they're falling over companies, CTOs are just screaming about the cost that they're layering on top of it. We're talking about all this, everything that you've seen in tutorials, right? Sticking blockchain, sticking AWS, sticking all these things in their multiple languages, multiple frameworks, Angular, what, 160? I don't know. <clears throat> but the basic thing is it's gotten too complicated and they've started to go back and say, hey, all right, this is way too hard, you know? Like, for example, if you used to work at a massive restaurant, a French restaurant or whatever it is, and you got laid off and you go home, do you actually have time to, you know, go sous vide the steak or uh, make a three course meal and plate the thing nicely and have a, you know, pastry chef do this kind of stuff? No, you don't. You just need to make dinner and it has to be nice. It has to be tasty. It has to be simple. It has to be so simple that your roommate who doesn't know anything can make and cook it as well. That's what PHP is. And that's why there is a switch, a big switch into PHP because it gets the job done. I know, right, that you see me, I'm the tech lead. And imagine I'm a chef, I'm coming over and I just whipped out, you know, my instant... Uh, pasta, right? Freeze dried, put it there. I might even go and make, you know, instant ramen, put it on top with a boiled egg, but it tastes good. It's just as good. It tastes much, much cheaper. And that's where we are at the moment. Now, I want to confirm and clarify a couple of points that people have made, uh, again, with the backhanded compliments. I think I need to address them because this is the PHP channel. So I saw one of the main ones is that, oh, PHP doesn't do front end, right? That's why you should do JavaScript. 
Okay, this is one of the big things that they, you know, I would say misinform you for you guys that know. Like you're looking at like, oh, why should I learn PHP? And I still have to learn JavaScript. Now, every single PHP developer, especially for my era, we don't have, I, this has never been a fight with JavaScript. We always acknowledge that JavaScript lives on the browser and does a few things on that side. And it's not a neither, either, or. You can use both of them. But the level of the JavaScript that you need to deliver a usable experience, a nice user experience, is very minimal. It's up to you how you want to, do, to, to uh, layer it on. It's kind of like that presentation layer when you're making food at a, fan, uh, at a fancy restaurant. If you want to go and decorate it however many times you want, you can do that. But for most PHP developers, we have a basic understanding of JavaScript. You can even use jQuery, just add a little bit of that. You want to hide, display, do some of this stuff. You can do that kind of JavaScript and let PHP handle the very complex model and controller uh, logic and just use JavaScript for the presentation. So we're never against this stuff. I like to use as minimal amount of JavaScript as possible. It's like using a minimal amount of salt, pepper. I just like the overall uh, code to be uh, robust and extendable and maybe just add a few things like um, like I said I sit on the Vue.js console um, I've got nothing against JavaScript so this is a misrepresentation that you have to learn all of JavaScript the back-end JavaScript front-end JavaScript and then PHP you can learn PHP you get be good at it output the stuff still do your HTML and a sprinkle of JavaScript and you will get a very solid user experience that tests the basic logic of the system rather than just the uh, fine tuning, the, the display. I am not criticizing that displays aren't important. You know, when you get to the high level of stuff, how something looks is very, very important, but you want to get the basic there first. You can have all the beautiful decorations on your plate of food, but if it doesn't taste good, you can just forget about it. So that's the first map misrepresentation that always is out there, that backhanded compliment. Uh, I don't really, I don't like that. The second big one, right, is all this idea about slow and fast. And you'll hear it all the time. Uh, Go is faster than PHP. JavaScript's faster than PHP. And it'll give you many, many reasons for this. Okay, and I covered this several, several times, but I think it's important that we refresh this the first point is about actual comparing speed right you it's based on your application and what you're trying to achieve and as i said many times the bottleneck isn't this um middle layer that's doing the work it's usually the database or it's the images that are doing the uh that are making things slow that is usually the problem and you want to fix those things first this is kind of like i said the ferrari guy who's increasing his engine and gets stopped at the stoplight in the traffic jam, right? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever just because you can measure it on a straight line. That's the first thing. And the second thing, the biggest reason they always give is that PHP is blocking. So I've covered this many, many times. I'm going to cover it again. Again, blocking is if things are handling one at a time. So if you have a shopping list and you just go and say, okay, item one, item two, item three, and while you're waiting for, you know, someone to serve you at the counter for the fresh meat section, uh, you're not doing anything, that's called blocking, right? They argue that, hey, you know, Node.js, that runs on non-blocking, it's on concurrency. That means while we have ordered, uh, you know, uh, we're being served at the meat counter, we're going to go off and do something else, get that and then process a list faster. And in real, in in theory, that is a very good idea. However, remember that PHP has the non-blocking part handled by the server-side language, which is Apache or Nginx, which is even better. So you're actually serving multiple people. So that's the first level of non-blocking that PHP is doing. Like, for example, if you and me both go to the same website, you don't have to wait for me to finish. <coughs> PHP will serve the other guy exactly the same. The blocking part will be the database. That's the first case. The second case is that we're dealing with website. 
technology, right? Most of these things are website technology. And the integrations are so fast and so numerous that you do not have any issue whatsoever processing them. You're, you're only talking about a few seconds here and there, right? Even if you're going through, there's so many little tips and, tips and tricks that you can do to get around these things if that is a major problem. But most of the time, it isn't. So you need to know how to compare apples to apples. So guys, I want you to check out all the new stuff. I mean, don't discount what people are saying, but add a little bit, pinch the salt over there, and then realize that PHP in 2024 is back and better than ever. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.